Hello and welcome to a tutorial on PE Design, specifically PE Design 11. Today we're going to be making a little uh, ITH that's in the hoop charm design and you can follow along in your own program. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So here we've got just the basic interface and this is with a 4x4 hoop. So that's your, uh, what is it, the SE400, if you've got a little brother machine. I personally use a PE770 and that's got the 5x7 hoop. Um, okay, so up in the left hand corner we've got our menu. And I don't think it's recording this, so... You'll have to scroll down to design settings and it'll pop up with a hoop size. And if you've got the 5x7 hoop, you'll choose the 130 by 180 millimeter hoop to be this big. But I'm actually going to be showing you how to do this in this little space. So up here in the image tab, you can open from file if you've got a design already made and I I've made this cute little strawberry design for us to do today so when I'm making these I always make an X where you can find the exact middle because a lot of my designs are symmetrical so down at the bottom left we're just zooming in as far as we can and putting this right there in the middle so yeah that's our zoom bar And now we've got our little strawberry inside the hoop where it belongs. Let's zoom out just a little bit more. So I'm going to the background image density. So just how, how transparent it is. I'm going to put it all the way down. It only lets you select four, either zero, 25, 50, 75, or 100. So I'm gonna put it all the way down to 25. So what I like to start with is I like to start with the outline. So, um, oh, we'll go to home. We'll go up here to shapes. And I've chosen the closed curve. That'll be on the first line. It's the second option. And over here it's got a zigzag stitch, and I'll change that to a running stitch for now, and a fill stitch, which is fine. So what you're going to do is, for symmetrical designs, I go ahead and start off to the side, and it'll be the opposite side of where you're tracing around. So we're just going to make a click every time we want it to curve a little bit. So we click here, and I'm just tracing around the lines I already made. Uh, you can right click to undo your clicks if, if it's getting a little wonky, which it did there. Another click, 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 click. And now that we're at the middle, I'm just double clicking slowly because if you double click too quickly, like I'll do it right here, it'll finish your shape. So double click. And now we've got this shape. And it's kind of gone all weird on the side, but that's fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to control C to copy and control V to paste. And now control J. And now we've got two of the same designs, but they're flipped. So if you're dragging anything, you can keep it on the same axis by holding down shift. So you see it's still perfectly lined up. And now I'll go ahead and drag a selection box around the entire thing. And as you can see, it's close to the middle. We'll go ahead and scoot that over just a tiny bit until uh, until you can see that this black dot here 
is right there in the middle. So once you have that, we're going to zoom back out. We're going to drag that selection box over them again. So because we have them like overlapping shapes, they're not like split down the middle. This is going to work. So you're going to right click. I sure wish that it would bring up the uh the box, the drop down menu. Uh so you'll have to go all the way down to modify overlap. And if you've done this right, you'll have the options to remove overlaps or merge. And we're going to merge. And now this is one shape. Now one thing you can do is when you go to the select tools, you pick the select point. Now you click on the full thing and you can see all of the nodes. That's all these little white parts. Little white ones here. Oop, I just added one by accident. You can add new ones. Um, but what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to delete all of them that are up in the middle where the overlap was. Uh, I'm going to add one and delete it just so it's flat on top. That's where the uh, the ribbon's going to be for the charm loop. And see, there's just all these extra ones. So I just like to delete a bunch of them. So now there's just the one there and you can drag it anywhere, but... Control Z will undo that, and so it's the correct shape now. I'm also going to make right here, since this part's relatively flat, we're going to right click and split a point. And then we're going to make another one here and split a point. So what we've done is we've made two different things. So let's say this one. There we go. We've got the red. We'll make this one blue so we can see it a little better. We're just going to take this little blue piece and delete it. So now you've got an open area and this is how we'll turn our project inside out once we're finished cutting it out. Another thing you're going to want to do, and this is something we'll save for the end actually, so don't worry about it, but when you go up here to select tools, you can select the third option, select entry exit points. So see, L1 is where it starts, and L2 is where it ends. And this would start it up at the top. Uh, so when we hit play here, it starts in the middle. And I'm not a big fan of that, so we're going to move it over to one of the openings. So I want them to go in the same area. So it just makes one big thing. Now I'm also going to go over to the left hand bar here and click sewing attributes. And the one, the run pitch is how long your stitches are. So two millimeters. I find that that works just fine for any of your sort of, uh, both, both for if you're doing applique and adding fabric, or if you're just closing up, I think that two millimeters is fine. Oh, and uh, Tiny Tired Turtle 98, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome on in. All right, so run times is how many times it's going to run. Uh, and we're just going to bump that up to two. So now instead of just one time, you're going to see it go all the way up here. It gets to the end of it and goes back around. I find that this helps keep it from, from opening up easily. Uh, the stitches can come apart if you just do one time. So let's, let's be safe. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to start on the applique. Let's go ahead and turn this back up so we can see. We're going to be making the green part. And if you don't know, applique is... We would start this design on red fabric. And applique is adding new fabric on top of it. 
and I'll go ahead and explain how we're going to do that. Also, thank you, Turtle, for, for the compliment. I love this model, too. I've got uh, credits in my in my bio for the maker. I cannot remember them off the top of my head. I've got too many models. Okay, so let's turn this back down so we can just see this. So we're going to go back to shapes, going to go back to closed curve. And we're going to do what we did before. Uh, so I'm starting... Zoom in just a little bit. So I'm starting... Uh, I'm, I'm gonna make a little shape to show you. I'm gonna start right here. So that's my first click. My second click is going to be... Just right on the inside of this line and... We're gonna follow that all the way and then we're going to go outside of the red line here because we want the fabric to go past our line here otherwise it is going to not show up all the way so just giving it that little extra is going to keep everything nice in line. Now I've got this funky shape. We're going to do what we did earlier. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. So now we've got two. Control J to flip it. And we're gonna hold shift and just move it over to about where we think the middle is. Now, to get two different items, or as many as you need, you click on the first item, so we've got the one on the right. We hold control down, and now we've got the one on the left. So we are holding both of them at, at this point. Now we're going to right click, go down to modify overlap, and merge. So now we've done the same thing. And let's right click, or actually, let me see. Uh, okay, yeah, you do have to right click. And there will be two options at the very top. And that's the outline, which is a running stitch. And then the fill stitch, which is like the, the area stitch. We're going to hit not sewn because this is going to be fabric. Let's change this to green. And I'm just going to remove those extra nodes. Oh, it looks like we might not have gotten any. We didn't. No extra nodes. We did real good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this is two run times. Uh, so what we do here is we have put the color, the green color, on top of the red color and it's sewn it. It's kind of hard to just describe, but we would cut out right along this line now. Is we would, we would take that hoop, we would remove it from the machine, we keep the fabric in the hoop, but we do cut up around it. And then once we've put it back in, so we're going to control C to copy, control V to paste. Let's make this a uh, different color. So to hold it in place, we're going to use what's called a satin stitch, or in this, we're going to right click, go to where it says running stitch and hit zigzag stitch. Now, I recommend for once we're over here in this yellow box on the right, I would put six millimeter density and four millimeter width. 
you can do less but if you're a beginner with this i definitely recommend having thicker lines and probably not going below three millimeters until you're like real sure you can get in there but the smaller you make the zigzag width the more likely you're going to get fabric sticking out from underneath it and it's going to look messy so your best bet is to just go ahead and use four millimeter i find gives you enough wiggle room that if it's not perfect it's still going to cover it up with this zigzag stitch now we don't want the zigzag stitch to go all the way around so let's over here on the left hand side let's drag our red outline down all the way to the bottom so now it shows up on top that means it goes third so we're going to create new nodes so that's up here at the select tools bar up on the upper left corner select point we're going to make points close to this we're going to right click and split at point we're going to do that on the other side i'm making one right here it's the black node and split a point so now as you can see it's split off the top section we can move it and we're just going to delete that we only want the one that's going to be inside of our strawberry and so now that stitch is going to hold in place the full fabric and it's going to be real nice and sturdy so let's go ahead and pull up our image again the last thing we have to do is we have to make the cute little strawberry seeds now i recommend for something easy like this going to shapes and yeah it's not gonna pull it up on mine or on the screen for you i don't think but there's a bunch of different preloaded shapes in the selection box and uh so if there's one there that you like you can use that i'm going to just use the circle and we're just going to make an oval okay so let's so we're going to right click and we're going to make it a fill stitch and we can have a zigzag stitch for the zigzag width i'm going to have it be two millimeters and for this you can just drag it with the corners and the middles and just stretch it like you would any sort of image manipulation like photoshop it's a pretty simple so yeah so zigzag with two millimeters for this outside one we're leaving the density at six millimeters now down here in this blue bar under sewing is the underlay and that's what's going to kind of hold the fabric in place and give you a little nicer surface for the embroidery machine to embroider on and so you can set that to dense medium or light i tend to use light but let's go ahead and do medium for this one i'm not really sure i'd recommend dense unless you're embroidering on maybe faux fur or something that's really going to just puff out of there but medium or light is going to be just fine now for the next part we've got uh density sorry it's it's going all over the place here um i like to have my density at seven millimeters per line and i find that that makes it so that it uh it's covered very well you're not going to see gaps in it and i prefer that a lot more but you can make it less if you want uh, if you want to use a little less uh, thread, that kind of thing, that's totally fine. Everybody has their own like secret sauce formula for for their different uh, densities and all of that. 
Now, direction is the manual straight line. And I usually do that for any area that you need to fill, but you've also got auto and it'll automatically do it. And so now it's just put it pretty much straight, but let's go ahead and pick manual straight line. And I'm going to set it to zero degrees so that it's going just straight across. The other one I do if it's a different shape, because for me, what I like to choose is whatever is going to be the shortest width it has to go. So I wouldn't want it to be 90 degrees because that would create just these long pieces. So that's why we're going with zero. I think it looks nicer. Let's go ahead and make this... Maybe not that. Now, since we've made this, I don't see why we can't just control C and control V. And so you've just copied and pasted and we're going to move that here. Now I'm going to go ahead and just do that. You can also use control D to automatically duplicate it, but it offsets it like this. So if you're trying to get it like on the same area, it can be a little bit difficult, but let's go ahead and do that. Uh, since we've drawn this already, there's a pretty good way to show where it's gonna be. So we just control D, control D. until we filled out all of these seats. And we'll go ahead and go to image and just hide the image. So we can back out. And now we've got our strawberry. So the last part we're going to do, or the last thing we have to make is up here at the top. So we go to shapes. I'm going to choose open straight line. And up here, you can see it's set to zigzag stitch. Um, and let's make that blue so we can see it. I'm going to make it a triple stitch. And I'm going to make it... Let's do six. So when you're making a straight line, you can hold shift to make sure it stays completely straight. Otherwise you can make any uh, sort of diagonal lines or in any degree. So we're, we're going six boxes over. Um, I think honestly it can be a little smaller, but we're not gonna worry about that. So that's going to be the the little line that holds down your little charm ribbon. Uh, so that way you can put on a little key ring or whatever kind of thing you want to put on that. Now we have to get everything in the right order. Luckily we're doing ones that's very simple. So let's go to the left hand side here. And uh, if you see, the word sewing order. There's underneath it is a little bar and we've got optimized sewing order. That's the little red, green, and blue. All right, actually it might be yellow. Red, yellow, and blue makes sense. Uh, little boxes and we're gonna click that and now it's put all of these together. But we can undo that in case we want to just click and hold all of these, uh, and let's say, and then I just clicked on yellow, so it's made both the middle and the outlines yellow. So now we just need to drag the red 
outline all the way to the bottom. So that way, once you've put in your fabric in the hoop, you'll start by doing the applique. And then you'll take out the hoop, you'll cut around the outline, you'll put it back in, and that's when you can put on um, your water-soluble stabilizer, which you want, especially if you're working with Minky. It keeps all the fiber trapped underneath, so that it doesn't poke out of the embroidery. It makes it very clean. Uh, it's gotten a little more expensive, especially if you're using like a brand name. I'm trying to remember the brand name. Uh, Salvi, that's the brand name. But you can go on anywhere, like Amazon I think has just no, no brand name water soluble embroidery stabilizer. And that's gonna run you a lot less money I think I bought my last roll probably a couple years ago at least, and so it lasts you a long while even if you're like me and you have been working on stuff, you know, a lot. So that's the, the water soluble stabilizer, you put it back in the hoop, you've got this second step where it's going to do the outline over top of your applique fabric. And then the third one is just regular embroidery for these seeds. The fourth step is the little line for your your uh, ribbon loop, the little charm, charm hoop. And then you put on the second thing of fabric and you just sandwich it on there. And you run your outline and then you cut it out and flip it over and you've got a whole thing. Um, perhaps after I've uh, gotten my stuff together, I will add a video of actually like making these so I can show that off. But for now, that's that. You've finished a whole little in the hoop charm and you can make it yourself, and it'll be fantastic. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be putting this on YouTube, and uh, I'll probably reply to comments there, but I just wanted to have this for anyone who's learning PE Design. This is specifically PE Design 11, but uh, it's not any different than PE Design 10. Like, I haven't noticed any differences. I've used both. So I hope this helps. I really do. Thank you for watching. <laughs>